Hello, this is Father David, here with day 30 of the Nativity Fast 2023. Uh, the Gospel reading today is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 9 through 16. It's a bit of an odd cutoff today. Uh, occasionally that'll happen with the daily readings, uh, but we'll talk about the first part uh, because the second part, the part that it leads into, um, goes into one of the Sunday readings. And so we will, uh, tomorrow we'll be jumping ahead. But uh, the reading reads uh, thus, and I'm going to be reading today out of Father Lawrence Farley's um, translation. He does his own translation in his commentaries. And then uh, to be talking about the gospel reading. Starting with verse 9. And as they were coming down from the mountain, he ordered them not to describe to anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man should rise from the dead. Of course, they're talking here about the transfiguration of Christ, which they had just seen. And they seized the word to themselves, debating with one another what was the rising from the dead. And they asked him, saying, why did the scribes say that Elijah must come first? That is, before the Messiah comes. And he said to them, Elijah indeed comes first to restore all things. And how is it written of the Son of Man that he should suffer many things and be disdained? But I say to you that Elijah has also come and that they did whatever they wanted, just as is written of him. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the scribes debating with them. And immediately all the crowd, having seen him, were startled and ran up to greet him. And he asked them, what are you debating with them? And then the daily reading concludes. So it uh, leaves on a cliffhanger. But let us look at, at what is given to us in today's gospel reading. You know, Peter, James, and John the sort of inner circle of the inner circle, has just come down with Christ from Mount Tabor at the Transfiguration. And he's ordering them not to describe to anyone what they had seen on that mountain, where he shines with the light of glory until the Son of Man should rise from the dead. And so they start to ask him or wonder amongst themselves, what could this mean, the rising from the dead? So they ask him, saying, because, of course, he's speaking of the Son of Man uh, rising from the dead. He's calling himself the Son of Man. He is giving to himself the title of the Messianic King, the promised deliverer of Israel. And so they understand what the scribes uh, teach, saying that Elijah has to come first. Of course, they're quoting from the prophet Malachi which says that he will come to uh, set the hearts of the fathers toward their sons and the sons toward their fathers to restore all things. And he said to them, Elijah indeed comes first. And then he says, Elijah has also come. And they did to him whatever they wanted, just as is written of him. Now, this is referring, most every Christian has, uh, Christian commentator, church father has uh, understood this to mean John the Baptist, John the forerunner, coming in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Um, this is uh, a, uh, and, and his commentary leaves very little doubt. They did to him whatever they wanted, just as is written of him. Uh, indeed, the uh, as Father Lawrence says, and as the modern Elijah has suffered as it was written of him, so would the Son of Man also suffer in fulfillment of the Scriptures. Though he was the true and transfigured Messiah, Jesus was to die. Now, it's very interesting to me that the matter of scriptural interpretation, this has always been a difficult um, and in some cases impenetrable uh, topic that you have here Christ telling his disciples in this place 
we are not speaking of the self-same person of Elijah. We are speaking of a different being, a different human being, who will come in the spirit and the power and the role of Elijah. Uh, it will not be Elijah himself who was taken up in the chariots of fire, but it will be someone else. So in this case, the scripture is referring to someone in figurative language that uh, we are not to interpret this directly, literally as Elijah himself, but that it is St. John the Forerunner. And yet the disciples are wondering about you know, perhaps they're saying, well, if we are not to interpret the scripture regarding Elijah as literal, you know, we love our categories here in the West, you know, should we, and it says, and they were debating with one another what the rising from the dead meant. Sure. Is Christ speaking literally or is there some figurative aspect of this? You know, certainly it was not the teaching of the scribes and the Pharisees that the coming disciple, uh, the coming Messiah, should die shamefully rejected by his people. Although, of course, this is how we interpret, uh, among others, but but primarily Isaiah fifty three about the suffering servant. And yet, uh, Christ is very clear and says that the Son of Man will literally be put to death. That this is the way that the scripture should be interpreted. Now this is, for us, indicative that scripture needs an interpreter. Scripture is never without an interpretation. Why? Because as it is written in the New Testament, there were things that the Old Testament prophets spoke not understanding the full meaning of those scriptures. Not even they were fully aware of what was being said, but they spoke as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Now, there are things within the life of the church that uh, amongst the corpus of the fathers, there has been very very much unanimity or very close to unanimity on certain passages, books, topics. We do greatly benefit from the, commenta the commentary uh, from the beginning. Of course, St. Vincent of Larens said that we believe, you know, what has been believed by everyone everywhere uh, since the beginning. And uh, this is for us a guiding rule. This does not mean, however, that we possess one particular definition on every single scripture. Indeed, the book of, for example, Revelation was almost not included in the canon of scripture because of the question of how do we interpret these you know, wild imageries, these wild apocalyptic imageries. Um, and yet, we do have for us the understanding because Christ shows us in this passage. There are certain things within Scripture that the way they panned out from Old Testament prophecy, speaking of Elijah, you know, that was something that someone, the scribes were saying, must happen literally. And Christ says, no, this is going to be more figurative with St. John the Forerunner. And then others will say, well, and yet... Uh, you know, he is saying that the Son of Man will come as Isaiah 53, as the suffering servant, that he will be put to death. He will be rejected by his people. And yet the scribes and the Pharisees said, and still many Jewish commentators say to this day, that Isaiah 53 refers to, you know, Israel as a whole, the suffering of Israel as a whole, as the suffering servant of the God of Israel. And so there is a, a sort of figurative aspect that uh, Jewish commentators put on this, and yet Christ is saying, no, there is a servant, and he will be persecuted, despised, and rejected by men. And so, you know, let us not be uh, quick to jump to a conclusion regarding the interpretation of Scripture, knowing that 
You know, we ourselves, as St. Peter says, no scripture is of private interpretation. But we have, in this case, Christ and the gospel, interpreting the Old Testament for us. And we have the church fathers who knew many in the beginning, the apostles themselves, and have with great diligence and great care studied to pass on the faith as it was originally received to the church, the deposit of faith once and for all delivered to the saints, as it says in St. Jude's letter. So may we rely on uh, this interpretation that's come to us from the beginning and let us approach the scriptures readily. You know, we're not shying away from the reading of scripture, but let us come humbly. Let us understand that we may be misinterpreting. We may need to investigate things further, that ultimately our faith, and this is the key, does not rely in a book but in the one of whom the book spoke, our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who himself is the word of God. So may the Lord God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.